In the last lecture, we completed DC resistance of PN junction diode. In this lecture, we will learn AC resistance. This is the VI characteristics of the diode and we will use these characteristics to calculate the AC resistance. If we apply an AC input in place of DC input, the varying input will move the instantaneous operating point up and down. This is very important point. When we apply an AC input in place of DC input, the input will vary and this will move the instantaneous operating point up and down. In case of DC input, the DC resistance, the DC resistance is simply equal to VD by ID. But in case of AC resistance, the input will vary and the voltage and current will not remain same. So we cannot use this equation. And now we will try to understand how the instantaneous operating point moves up and down when we apply the alternating input. In the last lecture, I told you we have different resistance levels. We have different resistance levels depending on the type of input. If we apply DC input, we have DC resistance. If we apply AC input, we have AC resistance. DC resistance is also called as static resistance and AC resistance is also called as dynamic resistance. We completed DC resistance in the last lecture and in this lecture we are dealing with AC resistance. VD is the voltage across the diode and initially VD is equal to zero and because of this current through the diode ID is also equal to zero. When VD changes like this, the current through the diode will also change in the same way. And you can clearly see with a small change in VD, with a small change in voltage across the diode, the current changes rapidly. There is significant change in current and the operating point will move because of this. Let's say at this point, the operating point is Q and at this point, you can see VD is equal to zero and ID is also equal to zero. When VD increases, when VD increases in this time interval, the operating point Q will move like this. And finally, the operating point is equal to Q1 when we have the maximum voltage and we have the maximum current. After this current, after this current and voltage starts decreasing and the operating point will move, will move like this. When we have voltage and current again equal to zero, the operating point is again Q. After this, the current will decrease till this point and also the voltage across the diode and the operating point will move like this. And you can clearly see the operating point is moving up and down. And for this time interval, for this time interval, when current starts increasing and also the voltage across the diode, the operating point will move like this. And when both current and voltage are equal to zero, operating point is again Q. So the operating point is moving like this up and down. Now we have to calculate the AC resistance and for this we will draw a straight line tangent to the curve through operating point. This will define the voltage and the current used to determine the AC resistance. I will redraw this reason. I will redraw the reason of the curve for better understanding. This is the operating point Q and we have to, we have to draw a straight line tangent to the curve through operating point. So I will draw a straight line tangent to the curve like this and uh, this will give us the voltage and the current used to determine the AC resistance. So we have the voltage and the current. This is delta VD and this is delta ID and the AC resistance RD is equal to delta VD by delta ID. This is how we can calculate the AC resistance. But in numerical problems, we will not use this. We will not draw the tangent line passing through the operating point to calculate the RD. We will use another equation. RD is equal to 26 millivolts, 26 millivolts divided by ID. We will use this equation and we will try to derive this equation in this lecture. This is very important. This is very important and by using this equation we can easily calculate the AC resistance by just knowing the ID. 
by just knowing the diode resistance we do not require the characteristics we only need the diode current so let's move to the derivation of this equation before this before this there is one important point that we should know the AC resistance will decrease when we increase the slope so on increasing the slope the AC resistance will decrease and this is an important point now we will move to the derivation derivation of this equation and we already know the equation for the diode current ID ID is equal to IS in bracket we have E raised to power VD by eta VT minus 1 this is what we have and I can also write this equation as ID ID equals to IS e raised to power VD by eta VT minus IS I have just opened this bracket and I will call this equation number 1 now in order to find out in order to find out AC resistance I will differentiate both the sides with respect to VD so let's see what we have in that case I will differentiate ID with respect to VD and now I will differentiate the right hand side with respect to VD this will give me IS 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 the constant with respect to VD so there is no need to differentiate IS we will differentiate we will differentiate E raised to power VD by eta VT E raised to power VD by eta VT minus differentiation of IS with respect to VD and IS is constant and the differentiation of constant differentiation of constant is equal to 0 so we have 0 here and now we are left with we are left with IS differentiation of E raised to power VD by eta VT and differentiation of E raised to power AX differentiation of E raised to power AX is equal to A E raised to power AX I will use this and we have we have IS by eta VT because A is equal to 1 by eta VT and we have E raised to power VD by eta VT so this is the differentiation of the right hand side and we can write IS E raised to power VD by eta VT equal to ID plus IS from equation 1 you can see from equation number 1 you can see IS e raised to power VD by eta VT is equal to ID plus IS when we add IS on both the sides we have IS plus ID equals to IS e raised to power VD by eta VT so the right hand side is equal to 1 by eta VT in bracket ID plus IS and ID ID is greater than IS so we can neglect IS and we have ID divided by eta VT and on the left hand side we have differentiation of ID with respect to VD now I will flip both the sides and we have differentiation of VD with respect to ID equals to eta VT by ID and eta is equal to 1 and VT is equal to 26 milli volts so we have DVD by DID equals to 26 milli volts by ID and DVD by DID is nothing but RD so we have this equation this is the derivation for this equation and we can easily use this equation to calculate the AC resistance there are some constraints related to this equation when diode current is a small when ID is small the value of eta is not equal to 1 but it is equal to 2 so you have to replace eta by 2 when ID is a small and when you are calculating the resistance when you are calculating the AC resistance near the knee now what is the knee if you draw the characteristics then this portion is called as the knee and when you are calculating the AC resistance near the knee then this equation becomes inappropriate this equation is accurate for this reason this is the vertical rise section so these are the two points you must consider when solving numerical problems by using this equation 
So this is all for this lecture. See you in the next one.